can, please uh, join us in uh, our pledge to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Typically, the next item is uh, public comments, but uh, I think yes. Pam has this presentation. Um, as you all know, we are, I, I'm saying for our retirement for Doug Erickson for 25 years of excellent service, as he's leaving out, we also have a new Township Manager and Amy, or Amy Fargus. And from the board, we would like to welcome you. We do things right here. <laughs> <laughs> And I guess we, we also need to thank, Doug had a retirement luncheon today and was well received and accolades uh, was given to him. We would like to thank the officials that gave accommodations and um, accommodations and citations to Doug. Um, the first one came from Cindy Kuntz, who represented Representative Thompson. The second accolade came from Julia Harshberger from Senator Lingenhall. And the third accommodation came from uh, Representative Conklin. And we would just like to say thank you for acknowledging 25 years of excellent service with Doug Erickson. Thank you. something to talk about that's not on the agenda, now would be the time to do that. If you have something to talk about that uh, is uh, on the agenda, please wait till that part of the meeting when we're talking about it. Is there anyone? I don't see any hands raised. Is anyone thinking about talking about anything? No takers. Okay. In that case, we're going to do some proclamations. Uh, Mr. Chair, before you do that, do you want to go back and see if there are any additions to the agenda? Oh, that's right. Thank you. <laughs> are there any additions being suggested to the agenda? We'll mention these and then we'll uh, vote on them. Anyone? No. no. None. Okay. Now. Now we're up to public comments. We did, we did public comments, and now we're up to proclamations. There are a number of them today. First of all, it's uh, National Emergency and Medical Services Week, and that week is uh, May 21st to 27th. And we also have National Public Works Week proclamation from May 21st to 27th. And the big one, which encompasses uh, a large part of the world, actually, the Asian Pacific American Heritage Mount Proclamation, along with the Pacific Islanders. And Sutan is going to uh, read those proclamations. All right, bear with me all. <laughs> so I'm going to start out with the uh, National Emergency Medical Services Week Proclamation uh, from May 21 uh, to 27. Whereas emergency medical services is a vital public service, and whereas the members of the emergency medical services team are ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness or injury, and whereas Emergency Medical Services has grown to fill a gap by providing important 
out of hospital care, including preventative medicine, follow-up care, and access to telemedicine. And whereas the emergency medical services system consists of first responders, emergency medical technicians, paramedics, emergency medical dispatchers, firefighters, police officers, educators, administrators, pre-hospital nurses, emergency nurses, emergency physicians, trained members of the public, and other out-of-hospital medical care providers. And whereas the members of emergency medical services teams, whether career or volunteer, engage in thousands of hours of specialized training and continuing education to enhance their life-saving skills, and whereas it is appropriate to recognize the value and the accomplishments of emergency medical services providers by designating Emergency Medical Services Week. Now, therefore, the Board of Supervisors of Patton Township, in recognition of this event, do hereby proclaim the week of May 21 to 27, 2023 as Emergency Medical Services Week with the EMS strong theme, EMS Week, where emergency care begins, we encourage the community to observe this week with appropriate programs, ceremonies, and activities. Proclaim this 10th day of May 2023 by the Patton Township Board of Supervisors. Is there a motion to this effect? So moved. Second. We moved and seconded. Comments, worries, fears? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that passes unanimously. We also have National Public Works. Do I need to read faster? No. No. Okay. All right. Let's National go. Public Works Week Proclamation, May 21 to 27, 2023. Connecting the world through public works. Whereas public work professionals focus on infrastructure, facilities, and services that are of vital importance to the sustainable and resilient communities and to the public health, high quality of life and well-being of the people of Patton Township. And whereas these infrastructures, facilities, and services could not be provided without the dedicated efforts of public work professionals who are engineers, managers, and employees at all levels, of government and the private sector who are responsible for rebuilding, improving, and protecting our nation's transportation, water supply, water treatment, and solid waste systems, public buildings, and other structures and facilities essential for our citizens. And whereas it is in the public interest for the civic citizens, civic leaders, and children in Patton Township to gain knowledge of and to maintain an ongoing interest and understanding of the importance of public works and public work programs in their respective communities. And whereas the year 2023 marks the 63rd annual National Public Works Week sponsored by the American Public Works Association, Canadian Public Works Association, Vietnam, resolved, we, the Board of Supervisors of Patton Township, do hereby designate the week May 21 to 27, 2023 as National Public Works Week and urge all citizens to join with representatives of the American Public Works Association and government agencies and activities, events, and ceremonies designed to pay tribute to our public works professionals, engineers, managers, and employees, and to recognize the substantial contributions they make to protect it, protecting our national health, safety, and quality of life. Proclaim this day, 10th day of May 2023 by the Patton Township Board of Supervisors. Is there a motion? So moved. It's been moved. Second. And seconded. Any comments? This is really a very important aspect of, of life for all of us. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that passes unanimously. And now the Asian Pacific and Pacific Islanders Heritage Month. Patton Township APA Heritage Month Proclamation 2023. Whereas Congress enacted a law in 1992 annually designating the month of May as Asian Pacific Heritage, American Heritage Month to celebrate the influence and contributions of those of Asian and Pacific Islander 
origin to the history, culture, and achievements of the United States. And whereas some Patton Township residents who hail originally from many diverse countries on the Asian continent and the many Pacific Islands are recent immigrants, and others are first, second, third, fourth, or fifth generation Americans. And whereas those of Asian and Pacific Islander origin are the largest racial minority group in Patton Township, making up about 11% of our population, and have enriched the ethnic and social fabric of our township with their diverse languages, cultures, and religious beliefs. And whereas those of Asian and Pacific Islander origin uh, contribute to, to and enrich our community with their creativity, enterprise, and skills as professors, scientists, technologists, doctors, students, entrepreneurs, artists, workers, writers, investors, elected officials, philanthropists, and more, building and supporting a vibrant and resilient economy in Patton Township. And whereas those of Asian and Pacific Islander origin are our beloved family and friends, our cherished neighbors, and valued members of Patton Township, where we remain committed to embracing and accepting all of our residents from diverse backgrounds. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Patton Township Board of Supervisors does hereby proclaim May 2023 as Asian Pacific American Heritage Month in Patton Township and encourage all Patton Township residents to celebrate the history and culture of Asian Pacific Islanders and Asian Pacific Americans and their vital contributions to our township, our country, our commonwealth, and our country, and our county. Proclaim this 10th day of May 2023 by the Patton Township Board of Supervisors. And is there a motion for that? So moved. So moved. Second. And second it. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent thoughts, excellent reading. My mouth hurts. <laughs> and now um, we're up to, a, we have a change of name for this particular pest. Um, the last time we talked about it, it was a spongy caterpillar, and now it looks like it's back to gypsy moths. I think it's still falling. Oh, that was bad. That was my mistake, sorry. Oh. Um, the worst time, the, actually, the worst time I remember for this particular pest was in the uh, late 1970s, when there were so many of these things that uh, they came down on the roads, and they, we almost had to call out the salt trucks because of the, the bad traction from those uh, horrendous things. But uh, they go through a natural cycle that uh, ebbs and flows, and. Uh, they're being sprayed for, so we'll talk about that. Yeah, just want to give you a couple updates. We're spraying on May 16th next week. Um, we're pushing out information over uh, through public service announcements and through social media. Uh, one update, and I apologize, it's hard to see. We had one objection that was filed, so we're uh, not going to be spraying uh, a corner of the township uh, down in the at Kerrigan Drive and, and uh, Christopher Lane. Uh, we did send a notice out to those folks. Uh, we offered them some partial reimbursement if they go ahead with uh, have a arborist spray. We're going to reimburse them what the cost of what would it cost us to spray, which is about $52 an acre. Uh, but, uh, since an objection was filed, we have to skip that person's property and then we have to you know, maintain a 500 foot buffer around that property. So at the end of the day, it was about 38 acres that got uh, cut out of there. So uh, that's the update. Okay. Thank you very much. That'll be next week and it may actually be partly sunny that day. Yeah, and if, if for some reason, the weather turns bad on the 16th. Our, our backup date is the 17th on Wednesday. All right, and now we're up to the George Georgetown sinkhole uh, grant update. And this is another information item. Well, it's turned into something of an action item. However, it turned into something <laughs> of an action item. <laughs> yeah, I 
as, as you recall, on um, Christmas Day, 2020, there was a sinkhole opened up in the in the parking lot of uh, the 18 units between 432 and 462 Amblewood Way. Um, code officials responded, and in doing so, found grounds to. Uh, Buildings may be unsafe due to subsidence of the ground, so people were uh, uh, were forced to to relocate, leave their homes because of the potentially unsafe conditions. Um, Pam Rob reached out to the governor's office and, and Representative Compton's office. Uh, short story: We were able. Uh, the governor has has awarded us one hundred eighty thousand uh, dollar. Grant. We have not received money yet, but uh, we have been awarded the grant. We're waiting on the money. Uh, $180,000 to help uh, cover the grant. The, the cost incurred by the residents. We know uh, almost every resident and owner had some relocation costs. Uh, the units were a mix of owner occupied and renter, renter, rental units. Um, the owners are the HOA for the for the association, did go ahead and do a comprehensive uh, geo geotechnical study to look at which uh, units needed uh, foundation work to make them stable. They worked with code. Uh, at the end of the day, there were six units that were uh, found to have significant uh, foundation problems. Those were 438, 440, 442, 462, 464, 466. Uh, they were identified initially as needing significant foundation repairs. Uh, subsequent to that, uh, based on some other inspections that the code so their code agency did, that one more unit was found to need some uh, foundation repairs. That's unit 458. Uh, I have provided, uh, we did send out last week uh, a request to all the owners and, and residents to provide us information on their costs that they've incurred. We've received uh, responses from about half of those. Um, to date, we found people have incurred, or will incur, about $334,000 worth of costs based on relocations and repairs that need to be done. I've estimated that there's probably another $200,000, $207,000 worth of costs that will need to be covered eventually, or that we'd like to get covered. Uh, let me pull up. As I said, we've received responses from half the units. Um, again, the cost I can verify as, as being reported by the residents is about $334,000. We estimate there's probably another $200,000 of costs uh, and various foundation repairs, relocation costs, uh, and then there's uh, inside repairs. All the all the units that have foundation repairs are going to need drywall work, uh, windows, doors, everything. When your foundation goes off kilter, it really makes a mess inside your house. So floors, whatever, tile, crack. So there's a lot of uh, work that need to go on in the interior of these homes too. Uh, all told. Uh, my estimate is there's probably uh, at least $620,000 worth of damages to those those units. Uh, if you take away the 180 we've already uh, received, uh, I'm recommending that we request another. Well, the, the total I came up with 442,000. Uh, rounding up is that we should ask the governor's office for another $450,000. So uh, one of the recommendations I'm making to the board tonight is that. Uh, reach out to the governor's office and a letter through uh, Representative Conklin's office uh, requesting another $450,000 in grant funding. Uh, and more, uh, what, it, what should the board do with the 180 that we already have access to? My, my recommendation is uh, the six units that were initially identified as having the serious foundation issues, uh, they've gotten estimates uh, the cost for all six units together is somewhere around $310,000. Um, 
obviously much more than the 180,000 we have. My recommendation at this point is to uh, inform those owners that we will provide them uh, $150,000 for the six units or $25,000 per unit. Uh, to help them cover those costs. Uh, the other unit, unit 458, uh, they tell me they have about $17,000, $18,000 worth of uh, repairs they need for their foundation. Uh, again, slightly less than half of that would be about $8,000 to the uh, owners of unit 458. Uh, that's $158,000 of the current $180,000. I recommend the floor hold the uh, other $22,000 at this point and see what else comes from the governor's office and you can have a, a discussion later on about how you distribute that uh, to cover some of the additional costs. Uh, we also have engaged Delta Development to help us administer the grant, make sure that uh, we're following the proper procedures and making sure we document, document everything that, uh, that we uh, take care of or document uh, appropriately with, with all the parties that we have the correct uh, receipts, invoices, whatever else we need. Um, we've, uh, Delta's already provided us with a uh, sub-recipient agreement that we've told the owners that they'll have to, uh, they'll have to in, uh, sign with us. I need to get that to Betsy so she can review it. Um, so anyhow, the, the fees that uh, Delta is going to cost at this point, I have an agreement with them for about $11,500. Uh, I think we've expended maybe $2,500 of that so far. But I would uh, recommend that the board consider taking $12,000 from our uh, cash reserves and general fund and designating that as for the grant administration cost with Delta Development. Uh, so we aren't using the grant fund at this point. So that's kind of a three-pronged approach I've put out there for you to uh, discuss and potentially take action to approve the plan. That's the end of my report. Okay, so we do need to talk about that. Uh, before we do, the, the three things I wanted to mention. First, I um, just wanted to thank Pam once again for getting this whole thing started. Um, the, the action that Pam took, what, rather than just talking about it, going after the first grant was just tremendous. So thank you, Pam. You're welcome, but I keep telling everyone it's not an I, it's a T. I see Walt um, Snyder, our code enforcement off, um, administrator. Thank you, Walt. You personally, thank you. Um, I know Walt's been on this from, from Christmas and continues to work with everyone to make sure everyone is safe in their homes as well as you know, getting our, our residents back into their homes safely. Um, Doug, thank you for your hard work in working with this. I can't even begin to, to thank you. Um, and, and Larry and the staff. Um, and Betsy, I know this is coming down the pipe to you, but thank you in advance. Um, this has been an education um, it tells everyone if you can give um, the ground subsidence rider, do so. Um, most of the insurance companies were denying all the displaced residents um, to cover anything. So please um, review your homeowner's insurance and, and find out what you have. Um, I'm, I'm going along with Doug's suggestion. I talked to Teresa from Delta Development and letting you know um, the consultant fees that I received from different consultants were beyond anything you could ever imagine. Over, over half, they saw 180000 and they wanted like 30,000. So, you know, no. Um, Delta it has been reasonable. They've been working with Doug. I would make a recommendation to the board that we continue with Delta development. Okay. My item two, you, you covered my item two, is to thank uh, our, 
codes director for his excellent work from day one when this problem uh, cropped up. And also the, the uh, item three is the insurance aspect. Just like, for example, if you have a, uh, a flood in your backyard from uh, heavy rain and it seeps into your, garage, into your basement, your homeowners isn't going to cover that. You can get a, a flood policy and since most of the area is in a low flood zone or with uh, only a remote chance of any of the, the traditional flooding, that insurance is not as expensive as it is for some people in other parts of the country. But you can purchase that. And the same thing for the sinkholes. This is a, the, the geology of this area um, makes it prone to sinkholes. And uh, so uh, if, you're, if you're able to purchase that insurance, it's a lot cheaper than uh, of course, it's, it's infinitely more expensive than if nothing happens, but it's a lot cheaper than if, uh, if, if something does happen and you have to get it fixed. Mr. Now, we'll Chair, if, it, if you don't mind, um, the other piece to all of this is we're asking all the residents that were affected in the sinkhole to be patient with us, it's a painful process. I, we agree as this board, but we are working diligently to, to help you. Um, it's, an, it's a painful process. I, I agree even for us that we have to follow rules and regulations for this grant. So we just ask you for your patience. We ask you for your understanding and to know that this board and our staff are working diligently to, to get you back in your home safely. Thank you. So need a now can we introduce a motion at this point? It was I, I need a review of the three points, please. Okay, so the first point is to designate $158,000 of the current grant, which is 180, uh, towards covering foundation repairs for the seven units as noted above. Um, that covers something not quite half of, of their estimates. Uh, the second point then is to uh, send a letter to Senator Conklin's office asking him to uh, reach out to the governor's office to uh, request up to another $450,000 of, of funding uh, to, for, to cover the additional cost impacts of the residents and owners of these units. And then the final point is to uh, designate $12,000 essentially from the cash reserves that the township has in their general fund uh, to pay for uh, consultant assistance with the grant administration. We, right now we have uh, Delta Development under agreement on a time and materials basis to assist with uh, making sure we do the things right to make sure uh, when the state comes back and audits us, audits you, um, <coughs> that you won't have to uh, send any, you won't have to uh, cover any of the costs. Uh, that make sure we've done it all correctly so that the state can't come back and ask for money back from the grant. I, I move that we uh, follow through on the three uh, items that Mr. Erickson just outlined. Okay, it's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion or comments? Yeah, I would just say that I'm glad that we were able to uh, get things done on this and that we're continue, continuing to try to, you know, advocate more and get more funding. Again, I just want to reiterate, I know this isn't a common experience as wide scale here in Patton Township, and this is a lot of money we're asking for, right? And this money is coming from somewhere, and so we want to make sure that um, residents are aware, like, this this may not be a thing that we can continuously do. And so, again, putting that responsibility on being very diligent and understanding what your policies and stuff look like and um, intending to that. So, um, that, that, Good point. Mm -hmm. Kids been moved and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
Okay, that passes unanimously. I think didn't uh, one of the legislators also introduce something or was planning to, to this, so that this Paul. type of thing could be handled? Yes, uh, Representative Paul Tackett is also working on a project for sinkholes with uh, another senator and will be reaching out to help us. So, yeah. Great. Okay, we'll move right along now to uh, public safety. The chief has a report. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, as you'll hear here in just one moment, uh, month of April was very, very busy for the police department. Uh, you'll notice that our officers stopped 204 vehicles, wrote 29 citations, uh, one parking ticket, handled 60 criminal arrests. And our bike patrol was out and pedaled 25 miles to 35, about 34 business checks, one parking ticket, and two vacation home checks. Uh, some of the criminal arrests that we handled in the month of April under uh, department notes, a 47-year-old male was arrested for theft by deception. Uh, he purchased $320 worth of merchandise from a township store and then loaded it into his vehicle. Uh, he then returned to the store uh, that he had just come out of where he had staged a shopping cart with duplicate merchandise matching exactly what he had just purchased. Uh, he took his receipt and went up to uh, the customer service and deceptively returned the duplicate property for a fraudulent return. So that became an arrest for theft by deception. 46 year old male was arrested for theft. Uh, he stole a purse from a shopping cart in one of our stores. Uh, loss prevention worker was, was right on top of it and noticed the theft occurring and she alerted officers. Uh, our officers did take that individual into custody and recovered the stolen purse. A uh, 24-year-old male was arrested for burglary, terroristic threats, and harassment. Uh, he had broken into his ex-girlfriend's apartment where he threatened and then physically assaulted her. 18 arrests were made for retail theft. 31 arrests were made for minor's law, which again is our fake IDs from the state store here on North Atherton. Uh, and four arrests were made for driving under the influence. Uh, we did hold a special warrant service night with MDJ McLean's office. Uh, we teamed up with Ferguson Township uh, to try to clear up as many warrants as we could prior to the students leaving. Uh, many of these warrants were for traffic for summary uh, violations, so we tried to get those uh, served the best we could. Um, we did serve 27 of the 87 that we attempted in the month of April. Great. And our officers did conduct six vacation home checks. Our officers did use force during one incident in April. Uh, we responded to a residence where there was a juvenile who was out of control. Um, officers held the juvenile just in a seated position uh, until they were able to get him calmed down. Uh, when the juvenile was calm, the officers were able to physically release him and then speak to him about uh, what had made him upset. Uh, and there were no injuries reported in that. Under community relations, uh, Officer Mitchell Snyder attended a drug take back event held at Wegmans. We've partnered with Med Wegmans for the last few years here to do this event. Uh, we did a little bit of a better job, I think, this time advertising. Uh, we heard a lot of feedback from folks showing up and not knowing the event was going to occur. Uh, so we did collect 27 pounds, uh, which is the highest we've collected there uh, and since we've done this event of unused and unwanted medication. Officer uh, so Tuskovich provided a tour of our station and one of our vehicles for the ARC of Center County. Sergeant Shapanko and Officer Vardzell conducted ride-alongs. Uh, Officer, Officer Tuskovich had a busy month here. He attended Spikes Fest at Medley Field. Uh, he did a uh, talk with some elementary age uh, students about law enforcement and the role of police officers. Spoke to sixth grade students about using evidence and reason to determine a conclusion. Spoke to a Girl Scout uh, troop about safety. And uh, then he went on a recruiting trip to IUP and Johnstown Police Academies. And this is a perfect time for me to stop one second to plug once again that we are hiring uh, for the position of police officer. Uh, we are collecting applications until this Friday. Uh, anyone is welcome to apply. <laughs> but uh, this, the applications will uh, allow you to, to participate in our written exam is the first step in our testing process. Uh, but we do have information on our website and our social media uh, accounts. There's links to a testing guide that has all the information about our community, about our department, about the position, and about our testing process. Um, so we do encourage uh, to please spread the word, but we are running out of time. Friday at 4 p.m. is when we shut down our, our applications. So uh, if you know anybody, please spread the word quickly. So. And then lastly, under community Doug. relations, 
<laughs> Lastly, on community relations, Officer Schaefer uh, gave a presentation to uh, the Islamic Society of Central Pennsylvania about uh, illegal drugs. Uh, training department activities, our officers responded, uh, attended tactical response team training. Officer Tuskovich attended training on reunification after a large-scale incident. Officer McCaslin attended the Crisis Intervention Team Symposium. And then I attended the Happy Valley Business Association lunch, uh, the Center County Chiefs meeting, and the Community Campus in uh, A few of the recognitions that we received here from uh, some of the community and some of our partners. Uh, the first was from uh, the Regional Director of the Office of Attorney General uh, under the Bureau of Narcotics Investigations, recognizing Detective Fedorenko uh, for a uh, case that he was the lead investigator on. Uh, this was a large-scale investigation uh, that was done uh, looking into uh, the distribution into our community of fentanyl, uh, heroin, uh, and methamphetamine. Um, he did a really fantastic job on this, resulted in a uh, grand jury presentment and indictments on several individuals who were involved in the investigation. So he did a really nice job on that. Uh, the next, we have a photograph uh, from our drug take-back event. So there's, uh, it's tough to see, but uh, Officer Snyder, uh, with an employee from Wegmans. Uh, so like I said, we have a really, really good turnout for that. Uh, the next two are letters that we received. Uh, first one is from Mayor Buddy Johnson and Chief Sean Weaver from Belfont uh, Police Department. Uh, the second is from Mr. Uh, I think Dr. Fedison, uh, who is the principal of the Belfont Area High School, uh, thanking uh, our officers for the response to the incident they had at Belfont High School uh, late in March. Uh, we have a performance report, and uh, I'm going to talk to you about this one. This is uh, our officers did a really, really, really nice job on this. A fantastic job. Uh, but officers McElrath and Officer Sunderland uh, responded to a residence uh, for a report of a juvenile male attempting to hang himself. Uh, when they arrived, they actually cooperated that that was in fact occurring. Uh, that the individual had a belt around his neck. Um, the officers quickly formulated a plan and actually kicked in the door. Uh, he was locked in a, a garage, mm -hmm. uh, kicked in the door, and one officer immediately went in and grabbed a hold of him, while the other officer removed uh, the belt from, uh, from the, the garage. Um, so they did a really, really nice job of formulating a very quick plan and executing it really to perfection. Um, so they were able to get the, the youth transported to the Mountain Indian Medical Center uh, for the treatment for the abrasions on his neck. Uh, and then also for a mental health evaluation as well. Uh, but truly, it was due to the quick actions of Officer McElrath and Officer Sunderland uh, that a life-threatening suicide attempt was averted and that proper treatment was provided to a youth in crisis, and their actions do really reflect the highest credit on themselves and on our agency. Uh, lastly, uh, I just mentioned this, but Officer Schaefer spoke to uh, the Islamic Society of Central Pennsylvania and we received a really nice thank you uh, from the president of that group uh, for Officer Schaefer's time and uh, contribution to, to their event. Uh, lastly is our record list of calls for service. Uh, like I said, we had a really busy month. Uh, 578 calls for service in the month of April. That's up from the 527 we handled in March. Uh, 84 were school checks, 56 were health and safety and MS assists, and 56 were traffic incidents. And that concludes my report. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Chief. Um, I just want to let you know, and I, I can yes. attest that Walt was with me on our COG public safety meeting. Um, we continue to thank your officers for being first on emergency services and, and calls um, and having the training. Um, we also had the annual safety uh, report from LifeLink. And they too attest to all officers that are trained, but especially Patton. So thank you and thank your officers. I, I appreciate that. And, and the chief of LifeLink, uh, Kent Knabel, um, has very publicly said uh, that you know, police officers, first responders are um, very effective uh, getting early CPR, early defibrillation from our AADs uh, are very key in, in the life saving chain. Yeah, I, appreciate that. I, just, I wanted to share a personal story that happened this weekend um, with the, because of the Patton Township Police. It's not nearly on the scale of um, some of these life or, life or death issues. 
But I think the, the, the story and the stories that we hear from you each month as you report are much more powerful than the, um, the pie charts and the graphs. I, I think it really tells the story of what goes on here. So on a, on a very simple story, I was out at the uh, community gardens at the hot track and a fellow gardener uh, noticed somebody on a motorbike and had been there a couple of times before. It was my first time seeing it. Um, I knew right what to do, which was call the non-emergency number and I shared that with her, that she could do that also. Um, but I just explained what had, what had happened and wouldn't you know, about an hour later, I, I get a phone call back from, I believe it was Officer Sunderland. It was. Okay, just in the shock of the moment that I, I called. And it was just a delightful uh, conversation, really thanking me for bringing that to his attention. And then he described what, uh, what he was able to accomplish. <laughs> Two officers had gone out. He had been the one who had actually run into the young person on the motorbike and suspected it might be him, some other incidences. But, but the end result was that he had a conversation with him. And uh, I couldn't have been more proud at that moment to get that report because uh, that conversation and, and other activities that I hear of the Patton Township Police, um, how, how they're um, interacting with um, in, uh, incidents like this, m might have a very uh, strong impact on this, the life of this young person rather than uh, slapping them in the, a jail or whatever, <laughs> or oh, the holding tank. Um, and, and it was just, it just made my day. And I also shared that with my fellow gardener. So, um, yeah, it's stories like that that make your department really sing. So thank you. On uh, the issue of, uh, of suicide, um, the Jana Marie Foundation is, is, is one that uh, has collections and does work, <clears throat> work in the community to try to prevent this. And with Senator Gibbs going on uh, today and tomorrow, uh, now is a good time to contribute to causes like that. Which brings us to the Planning Commission report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, our Planning Commission member is not present this evening, so I will give the report. I'm not going to make it too long to steal Leslie's thunder. So. <laughs> Uh, the first item that the Planning Commission reviewed was uh, Land Development Plan for Geisinger Clinic, Grays Woods Edition, uh, Phase 3. Uh, the information um, as presented is, is identical to what was in the Planning Commission agenda. And in the end, uh, the Planning Commission did vote to conditionally um, approve, recommend conditional approval of the plan um, with a vote of 6 to 1. Um, so they uh, recommended the conditional approval as noted in the agenda with the um, addition of um, outstanding staff and agency comments and also recommending uh, approval of the parking waiver as noted. Uh, the two additional items that the Planning Commission reviewed were sketch plans. Uh, it's been a while since we've seen a sketch plan. So Sutan wasn't here last time we saw sketch plan. Um, what it means is it's very informal. St staff did not review it. Um, the developer's coming in just to get the thoughts of the board. So um, they did the same with the Planning Commission, and the comments were collected. Leslie prepared a memo, and it was included in your board packet. So there were two sketch plans. The first one was for uh, the golf resort redevelopment, and then the second one was for the master plan. And that is a summary of the Planning Commission meeting. And again, those uh, sketch plans are, are covered under the municipality's municipal planning Correct. code. And uh, nothing is binding with those, and they're, vol they're voluntary, but they help us get more information to, to uh, hopefully come out with better outcomes. Yes. And now you have a... Go ahead. Thank you. I always feel redundant talking after somebody presents what happened at the Planning Commission. But okay, so um, the Planning Commission met last Monday, and if you remember back in February, there was a master plan submitted for Gray's Woods Geisinger Healthplex, and it had four new phases of development, and it was conditionally 
uh, approved, but it has not yet been recorded. So subsequently, when that plan was submitted, there was a phase three land development plan submitted for a two-story, 10,750 square foot building addition. It includes a new parking lot, um, site lighting, landscaping, um, long-term and short-term bike racks, utility relocation, and stormwater facilities. There is a pending traffic impact study that's associated with this plan, and um, it is going to request traffic signals at Grays Woods Boulevard and Abigail Lane, and at Gaynor Road and the I-99 northbound um, interchange. So there was a parking study that was, that was submitted, and with that parking study, Geisinger has requested a waiver to reduce the amount of parking. There are two surface lots that are proposed for this site, and they're hoping to eliminate the second one that's behind the parking garage. So the parking study is available upon request. The Planning Commission, as Alex had mentioned, had recommended conditional approval and approved the parking waiver. Um, and I believe the parking waiver, partial plan set, all of the staff comments and the comments from CATA, Refuse and Recycling, and the Fire Director are all included in your agenda packet. There are representatives here this evening from Borton Lawson and from Geisinger if you have additional questions. Does anybody have any questions, issues, or concerns? Betsy? Uh, I have a comment. Uh, first, I want to um, uh, applaud the the work that was done on the uh, the changes to the landscape uh, plan and the suite of trees and shrubs that were substituted for the ones that were originally there, and I and I love the fact that whoever did it cited the Bible of native land, which is Doug Tommy. But I do have two suggestions, um, and and my background is in this and in 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 botany, so. Um, it's not like I did special research on this. But, um, there's one, you have one tree on there, I just have to enlarge it to read, which is the, um, the, uh, the ABs, um, try to, uh, that's the scientific name, I apologize. It's the uh, Fraser fir, I think that's one. Um, that, that actually is not native to this area. In fact, it's, um, it's found on um, a, a few states south of here in Appalachian Mountains. Um, so even though we are kind of in the Appalachian Plateau. So I don't know if you'd have very much success in that. Um, it's, it's also, and, and just FYI, and for anybody else listening, the, the benefit of um, using uh, native plants is not only that they, or if you plant them in the right place, in the native, um, you know, wet versus dry, et cetera, but that they uh, can be hosted to native insects and, um, yeah, insects, which then pollinate our plants. So that's a, a really important part of our ecosystem. But that particular fur actually does not, is not host to a lot of pollinators. Um, so I would recommend either a white pine, and we have an arborist that we use as a consultant, I believe, but either a white pine or, um, I'm trying to, uh, sorry, so I forgot. Ba ba basically, you're pining for a change in trees. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry? You're pining for a change in I'm trees. I'm pining for a change in trees. Thank you, Elliot. I missed that. I can't, can't think of a pun comeback. Um, and the other tree is you have a, uh, I apologize, because I just have to increase the, um, of oak, you don't have any oak trees. They're actually excellent pollinators. They might be a little bit more expensive. They're slow growers. You know, the, the client might not like, like it as, as much, but if you put a white pine, which grows quickly, you can put oak trees that grow a little more slowly, and you'll just be doing right by the environment for the next 100 years. And that is the, oh, I guess the linden tree is one that you have down there. I'm sorry, I'm just losing my place there. I mean, it's a native tree, but it's just not a great pollinator. So just some thoughts there, and uh, but mostly I really appreciate the research and time that you obviously put into coming up with a new suite of trees and shrubs. Yeah, thank you. Yep, thank you. One yard at a time, right? <laughs> One master plan at a time. Well, I wonder with the problems we've had with oak, with the oaks locally, whether that has anything to do with this, or... I mean, it could, but 
you know, I don't, I mean, I think overall, most of the oak trees that we have here are standing, so I wouldn't worry about that. Is that, right. but oak trees tend to be more expensive, they tend to be slower growers, um, but the, I believe a, the scarlet oak is actually a fast grower, um, and yeah, and that, that's something that our arborists could advise on. So. And oaks also uh, give an opportunity that if you didn't do enough raking in the fall, when all the other trees let their leaves go, the oaks will do it in the early spring and you get to rake again. There you go. Yeah, bass, I'm sorry, basswood was the tree, not a, not a linden tree. It was the one that I was <coughs> going to suggest a replacement for. It's a nice tree. It just, it doesn't host as many pollinators, yada, yada, yada. So it's just me being nerdy about plants. Thanks. Thank, thank you for the, as usual, good education. <laughs> I know they came and sat through this whole meeting, so do y'all want to say anything? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll say it. You don't have to. I, I do appreciate Alex, Leslie, and, and Nicole uh, you know, working with uh, us through the project. This was uh, my first project in Patton Township, and they were very helpful, uh, and I'm happy to work with them again. And the Planning Commission and the supervisors as well. Can we get your name for the record? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Nick Argot with Born Lawson. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, oh, Hello, um, Ron Lesher with Geisinger, uh, AVP Workplace Delivery. We appreciate the opportunity to expand our facility in your township. Um, we appreciate the work. It was very nice meeting you guys and working through the process. So we're excited here today to hopefully get an approval vote here today. <laughs> So, we're excited. I uh, appreciate your time, and thank you very much. I get to pull up the rear. My name is Kirk Thomas. I'm the Chief Administrative Officer for the Western Region of Geisinger. And I, too, I just want to say thank you for all the work that's gone into this, and uh, we're excited to bring this expansion to Patton Township and to the State College community and all the communities that we serve here. So, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. I, can I say one other comment? Um, sure. I, I too want to thank Leslie and Alex and Nicole, because um, I'm a process person. I'm very interested in how we get from point A to B. And I noticed that there was a long sheet of, of changes recommended. And I said, you know, is this unusual? They said, no, but it is the first time that this particular planner has gone through that. And these three women took the extra time to go through and make the changes. It's a learning process for you, I understand, as a first time. And I'm proud that we have a staff that um, assumes that responsibility in a, in a pleasant and professional way. So kudos to you three. Super. Thank you, Betsy. I'll pass that to Nicole as well. Please do. Oh, my gosh. From, the start, from a historic standpoint, I remember when the first developers wanted to come in on, on that interchange. And uh, we heard a proposal that somebody wanted to build a shopping mall there, a huge mall, and when it was explained uh, what uh, changes would have to be made to the plan and what was needed on the lot, the developer said, oh, well, that's going to be kind of expensive. And they actually decided not to do that. And so we're, we're glad that the, uh, the Geisinger came in instead yes. some years later. We need a motion. Any other comments? No. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we uh, approve this plan. Do you want to add to the conditional approval motion the specific tree species recommendations as well? Um, I, I would, but it, it kind of, I noticed. Um, we're all taking notes. Yeah, we're all taking notes, so yeah. <laughs> And I mean, yeah, except for the Fraser fur, what, what you have is really excellent. Um, I really, just really Were appreciate it. Were there other uh, technical concern. items in the approval? No. We also need to mention the parking waiver um, in the, in the uh, vote as well. So that's a, there's, the parking waiver is included in the motion. Mm -hmm. Tulips. Yeah. So moved um, with the recommendation of the parking waiver and the recommendation of the trees, native trees. Okay, we've had mm -hmm. a motion and a second. Yep, and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 
Opposed? Yeah, that passes unanimously. Good luck with it. Thank you. Now we're up to the sketch plans, and remember again the sketch plans. We we're looking at uh, the just the the beginnings of uh, what's being proposed, and there's nothing cast in stone about it, but uh, it gives us a chance to offer comments and suggestions. I guess the first one is the Toft Trees Golf Resort. Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Tony Fructal. I'm with Pentera Engineering. We're the, the civil engineer for the the owners of the the Toft Trees Golf Resort property. I think we all know where that sits on Toft Trees Avenue. Um, and what they're proposing is a complete demolition and rebuild of the existing facility that's out there. Um, the golf course itself will not change, but the the look, the feel of the proposed building. Um, this is this is they're shooting for a, a Marriott signature hotel. It will be an upscale kind of place, um, and you can see you may have seen this or remember this rendering from uh, when we were in talking about the the, the building height. Um, but this would be a view as you approach the, the property from the front off of Toft Trees Avenue. It'd be five stories high. It'd be a main drive that comes in here around about parking on either side. Um, we'll look at a plan a little bit later, kind of what that looks like. Um, but you can kind of get a feel of what the building, um, what they're going for here. It actually will be a little more compact. Um, the existing facilities kind of spread out a little bit. Um, this will be up instead of out, kind of preserve some of the property. Um, they are increasing the number of rooms. I think they're right around 100 rooms at this point. Um, on the existing facility, this one will be uh, 150. Um, it will also have a, a restaurant for the public, the field. Uh, I don't know what it's going to be called, but there is a plan for that to remain, um, and there will be the, the size and the seating is, is planned to be increased. So uh, we've gotten pretty fo positive feedback on that. Um, the, next, the next rendering is from the rear. Um, so this is kind of the same, this is the look, um, this would be kind of from the, the ninth uh, green if you're familiar mm -hmm. with the golf course itself. Um, and part of what they would do is uh, this, this area over here, that's the revised meeting slash ballroom slash convention area, anticipated of, of course for large expositions and um, <coughs> weddings, they would like to be able to, to host events like that. They would be increasing the kind of the size of the back lawn. You can see the area there, um, kind of the gazebo trellis out there. That would facilitate those those sort of events. Um, if we go to the next sheet, this is this is kind of a layout. Um, so here's the building right here. Um, the existing building kind of sits over in this area right here. So the building's kind of shifting a little bit from what we're used to. Um, as far as the location, um, but it's, it is kind of, um, it is getting a little more compact. This would be the main building area here that we kind of saw. This is that, uh, the meeting space, the, the convention center space, the, the, what they would use for um, uh, weddings and such. Uh, a copy of this plan was preliminary presented to the staff that actually had the driveway came down and kind of came out on Toft Trees Avenue over this way. We got comments back that said, um, yeah, that's not a good place for that. So we went back, redesigned this a little bit, moved the, the driveway up to align with um, the apartments on the other side. This will be the main driveway that comes in and out. Um, patrons and, and golfers and uh, folks that are staying at the hotel restaurant will use this driveway. The existing country club lane will remain as a service driveway. Um, so, uh, deliveries to the loading dock, which is back in this corner here, um, trash, recycling, those sort of things, that will take place back there. It's, there. There will be a little bit of staff parking there. Um, we do have a connection here. More than likely, that will end up being gated as an emergency situation. If we need it, kind of get people in and out, but it's not intended to remain open. Like the, the two would be, would be separate. separate. Um, you can kind of see what the parking looks like. We did have to increase the parking. Um, the rooms increased. Uh, uh, of course, the, the restaurant increased, so parking had to increase. Um, we're still working on exactly what that looks like. Um, the, the facility has a couple different uses in it with the golf course, with the hotel, with the restaurant. Um, 
with the ballrooms. So we're kind of working on exactly what the parking looks like as far as how many spaces are needed. Um, we don't want to go overkill. We don't want to do more than what's you know required because then you just have parking that you have to account for doesn't get used. So that's that's sort of still in process. So uh, we're waiting on a traffic impact study. Um, the counts have been done. They're evaluating that right now. Um, and that's just kind of to figure out if anything's needed as far as Toftrees Avenue, the entrance drive. Um, but we haven't gotten that back yet, so I, don't, I can't comment on that. Um, that's what we're waiting on. Then we'll make a formal submission to the township for a review and, and get it to, to you guys for formal um, you know, approval. Uh, that's kind of all I have. We just wanted to get in front and see if there's any comments or anybody has any questions, something I should work on for when we bring this thing back in a month or two. One thing I noticed, um, and this doesn't have to be changed, is that in the, in the two pictures there, the wind direction changes by 180 degrees if you look at the flag. And uh, so we will make sure that the flags are capable of going either direction. Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I That's what I heard on it. So. I thought it was a, a neat touch, though. It's a southeast wind first, and it's a northwest wind in the second picture. I forgot. I forgot. How close is that proposed, uh, the new entrance to Tall Trees, their, um, their, uh, the Turtle Creek, their entrance at the bottom? It's right across the street. These would, they would be right across the street, yes. Yeah, so it's likely we're going to end up adding a left turn lane. I wonder for that new entrance, so there'll be left turns right here. in and out. And staff will have to look at the geometry of that turtle creek and make. Would you? There's some same ownership between the two properties. Let me put it that way. Yeah, maybe and not 100 percent the same, but there's a lot of people involved on both sides of the street that. So, if, if need be, we might have to do some uh, yep. modifications oh. to the entry oh. to the... Once we get the traffic study and staff reviews it, we, we can certainly look at what that geometry of those intersection looks like. Intersection looks like. Um, you know, what we don't want to have is what we call a, a negative offset, where your left turns kind of cross each other mm -hmm. trying to get in. Mm -hmm. um, so, we certainly don't want that. Um, but based on um, sight distance coming over the hill here, for this side and sight distance down around the turn for this side, we'll determine exactly where that driveway goes. So that's, we're showing it where we anticipate it, but that could still change. Okay. I remember living there and it was a nightmare or so, sometimes, so. Oh, this yeah. will make it way better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I understand and we'll, we'll look at it for sure. Um, we I, I might have missed something. Would you consider a, tr a signal at that intersection? You well, were talking about left hand. The traffic study will determine whether okay, it's for sure. the requirements for a signal or not. I don't think we had to. We did it. We looked at it when we were doing the Toft Trees corridor plan, and we didn't see it meeting the, meeting the requirements for a signal at that point. Okay. So, but we did see that it did require a left turn lane. Yeah, my, my guess is there won't be enough traffic on this on the minor approach to warrant the signal. Yeah. One thing I noticed uh, being old is that the, it's not a very well lit, lit intersection, but uh, I'm not in favor of, make, of making more lights there. Uh, yeah, the, the existing intersection has lots of problems, so we're very happy to see the main entrance move. Yeah. So that yeah. That so we didn't keep it where it was mm -hmm. because of what Doug said, um, and there is planned to be lighting along the driveway here. So there will be yeah. there will be additional light there. And under our corridor plan for Toft Trees, we would have lighting up along there too. I have some other comments. Go ahead. Kudos on the plants. Thank you. You did a great job on that. Um, we're comments provided by the Planning Commission. There's a list of them, right? I'm sorry? There's a list, a list from the Planning Commission. Yes, the, yeah, there were, there were comments from the Planning Commission. I, I didn't read them. No. In fact, I didn't even bring them with me. 
Um, one of the primary ones, of course, was parking. Just they were just had a concern to make sure. You know, this is sort of a contained facility, so if you don't have enough parking, what do you do? We're we're working on that. So. Okay. Did you? I don't know. I'm a little bit. I don't know if I misheard. No, kudos on the plants. Oh, the plants. Not the plans. Oh, we're, so. No, yeah, did you guess? The landscaping. The, well, yeah, the landscaping. that was just in passing. You know what? But, Thanks for that too. Okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry yes. about that, and then I thought maybe I misheard. No, um, I misheard. That's my that's I, my mistake. I didn't, so. I didn't hear it right, so okay, that's sorry. my fault. So, a question that I'm I'm just asking everyone now. Yes. Um, you are. This is perfectly. Um, this building is perfectly situated to capture solar energy. So I know we don't have any requirement. Um, we can't require people to put yes. in solar energy, but. I would put in a strong recommendation so that we've had that conversation. It, it really is perfectly oriented. That's the word I want to make. I want to say. I know I will pass that along. I'll make sure everyone's aware of that. <laughs> we do it enough. It might happen. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, I did I hear that there's a pickleball court plan for that this? That is a plan. <laughs> Here we go. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Tony, we might as well have it now. There That's is awesome. there is an outdoor. There's an outdoor amenity area on this side, um, and, and I apologize. It's all right. This this area over here will sort of be dedicated to the, the recreation side of the, the building. Uh, the golfers can drive down through here, drop off their bags. The golf pro shop is in here. There will cool. be a spa in here. This is a, a pool. This kind of whole area here sits sits down a level um, from the from the main area. That'll be there'll be a retaining wall around here, and they have designated a sports court area here and here, and it looks like you can fit four pickleball courts in there. Okay. So there was. So there, we we do have an ordinance. Request. I believe it's an ordinance now that uh, stipulates the distance that a pickleball court needs no, to be. No it's we not an ordinance. It's a suggestion. That's a policy for our own parks. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Well, nice I, try, Betsy. No, it's I. It, I'm not ever going to stay there, probably. Yeah. And if I do, I'm going to request a room on the other side. But anyway, so yeah, all I'm saying, so I don't want you to run into the same situation. Whatever, just be advised of that. that the are owners are very aware of the issues the township is okay. having with the pickleball courts and why. Um, it looks like a good location. And they, this, there would be there would be some sort of fence or wall probably in this area here that would help. Okay. Restrict sound and mitigate yeah. sound and so and it's proposed who knows if that's actually going to end up there or not but there there was a request that we show someplace that it could go so yeah. there how, it is how far is that is a, a, a proposed pickleball ball, pickleball court from the nearest house though it's it's, it's, it's not really the nearest far, house it's, it's over the 500 whatever yeah, it you know. is way over um, it, so if, there were, if we had an ordinance, it might have been 500 it, feet, and yeah. this would be more. I can't remember right. what it was. It's, it's, it's further than that. Yeah. It okay. would be the whole way across. The closest would be the whole way across. It would be right here. Yeah. I think that's So fine. you're going up the hill, down the hill, across the street. A lot of trees. Street, yeah. Um, for, what it, for what it's worth. So, yeah. I just. Down in the hole. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't go there anymore because it's too expensive, but if I was teeing off on that par 3-9, I'd be a little annoyed with that pickleball sound. <laughs> <laughs> so that was also a yeah, comment from the Planning Commission, and it will be yeah. noted. So thank you. Yeah. yeah. Great. So the plan is to start construction after the next this next football season, right? That's correct. If we can get everything put in place and all the development ready after immediately after the last football game this coming fall, they will start construction, and they intend to be in June. Well, they intend to have occupancy. Summer of 2025. Summer of 2025. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone in our audience? Online, because I can't see. Anybody online? Oh. They're, they're missing a great meeting. Okay, well, thank, thanks tremendously for showing us the plan. Sure. And we look forward to seeing the next. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All the comments. Sure.
So the next one you're also doing, and it's the yes. uh, sketch plan for Toft Trees West Master Plan update. Correct. So on behalf of the, the owners of the Toft Trees West properties, um, as, as you are probably aware, um, as this development moves and as the plan was originally created, it was, it was created to be flexible as, as development comes in and what we could do and, and what the development needs and kind of, kind of dictates a little bit what it looks like. Um, when the Mount Nittany Medical Center came in, this was, our, the R14 was here and the, the mixed use was over here and we requested a revision of those areas um, to, to get the medical center right here, which is being built out there right now. Mm -hmm. So what the owners are proposing is another relocation of properties, which would be from this 4.2 acres that are right on this corner here and this area right here. Um, this area existing is, is designated as residential. This is designated as commercial. Um, there is another uh, medical related business that's interested in this property right here developing in that area. It kind of makes sense to be in adjacent to this town center and um, will probably be coming in and requesting a revision of those two zoning areas. Uh, they're, they're, they equate to each other area wise, um, so we're not, we're not flip flopping any um, percentages for the entire development or anything like that. Um, it's just a matter of getting the development area close to kind of the other development area, what it's, you know, the similar uses in similar, similar spots. Um, you can see there's a, there's a blue line here that kind of designates the town center, which is the zoning, has kind of a special zoning designation. Um, I think the request would be to kind of, uh, to relocate that blue line to just reflect what the request would be for moving those two zoning areas. Um, well, obviously, we'll have more, a little bit more information on exactly what that is at that time. Um, but again, just wanted to get the, the board familiar with, with future proposed changes. Second proposed change to the master plan would be the addition of this road area right here. Um, currently, it's shown as coming in and having a cul-de-sac that kind of ends right here. That creates a real long call to second that, that any businesses in this commercial area would kind of, folks would have to come in and kind of loop the whole way around. Um, I think initially we weren't quite, kind of, didn't have an idea of what that area would look like. Um, that call to sack was probably not, not great design to begin with. So we're proposing to bring that road out. It would create a four leg intersection at the Water Road, Toft Trees Avenue. Mm -hmm future master's boulevard intersection, kind of coming down over the hill there. Um, we understand that will require a new traffic study. There's all kinds of work that we have to do for that before we can get to that point. We know that engineering hasn't been done yet, um, but it's coming. We anticipate it coming. And again, wanted to get in front of the board and just if there's any comments, questions, something we should be thinking about as far as you're concerned, we'd be happy to entertain that. Does the, does the rail trail does the rail trail issue come up at this point regarding the missing connection yeah it will come up during the, the but it's, it's part of this though right it, well yeah it's a part of the big picture of what's happening in Toft Trees but um, we plan to discuss that whenever we receive the submission for the golf resort with ownership okay does anyone else have any other questions, issues? Again, we don't make any decisions right now. We wait to see the next plan. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much. Now we come to the easy part. Not. The uh, administration and the first thing here will be the uh, Council of Government's Capital Improvement Plan Review and, and I'd like to thank everybody who sent in comments. Um, the thing I, I saw as I looked through all the comments before we go into the ones specific is 
we need a way of reining in the the cost the cost and make them more uh, predictable, and also specify exactly what we're spending the money on and when and why. And I saw an interesting idea also raised that uh, since we want to avoid siloization of COG, so that if you have a vehicle for one purpose by one co has one COG agency, is there a chance that that same vehicle could be used by another agency at a different time, rather than just duplicate getting more vehicles? And then there's a lot more in here, but uh, we'll go through this now. Who is going to? Uh, uh, I'll take it. Um, we had comments. Both Larry and I provided some comments. Dan Torino and uh, Ms. Rob had also provided comments on uh, specific issues within the um, the COGS capital improvement plan, they were provided on this document called Compiled Comments, and then uh, C. Tom Magruder had presented, had provided uh, some additional comments uh, on uh, Friday or Monday, I can't remember. Uh, so I didn't get a chance to incorporate those into the other compiles, but I did, did provide a separate documentation that C. Tom did up. Thorough job of looking through things and came up with some good questions. Um, from there, I did put together a. Um, let me find it real quick. What I called uh, suggested consensus comments, which was really to take everybody's comments and and put them into. Uh, Final form that if the board satisfied that would go to COG as the, as the Patent Township's official comments. We did, uh, Larry has provided all our preliminary comments to the executive director so uh, they could have a chance to start getting the information together. Um, Larry will also be sitting in as part of the Finance Committee and Facilities Committee meeting tomorrow where we'll talk about these things. But uh, at this point, I'll turn it back to the board for any questions or comments. Who would like to say something? <laughs> so, so I've been remiss in not turning in my comments. I haven't taken the time to look through this as I had wanted to. Uh, so I apologize for that. But I wanted to uh, ask if there had been, if there were any comments about uh, on, on any of the vehicles, um, not so much the, the cost, although that's obviously important, but whether they would be um, hybrid vehicles, electric vehicles, um, same with uh, any of the, um, the smaller equipment, less than cars. So I would like to put in a comment there somewhere. And I just wanted to, um, I was concerned about the Millbrook Marsh um, boardwalk, so I just wanted to confirm that if, if I'm reading the proposal correctly, that they are looking at the basically, uh, they're hoping to get, um, is it 7,000, 7, 7 million? <coughs> or I guess it's six, 6 million that they have down for the boardwalk renovation and estimate. But they also have, uh, there's also a, a line item above that that um, the $2 million will be coming from grants, gifts, or loans. Um, the loans, I'm guessing, would mean that we would be footing the bill and paying the loan, but I just want clarification well, on that. Was that the assumption when they say from loan? From point of view, there's a significant difference in whether it's a loan or grant or a gift. Yes. I mean, the loan we're responsible for okay, a portion you. of it. Yeah. Uh, they go out and get grants or gifts, that's, that's quite a different impact on the municipal budget. So I think at this point, we're just asking them to clarify where that money's coming from. Okay, and, good. And this is the vehicle that you all should be using to have that discussion. Yes, exactly. And, you know, it, I think there's going to be a lot of discussion about 
uh, boardwalk, but you know, is there an appetite to do it through grants or through loans? And uh, I'll see if Amy's got any input on that too. But I think at this point, we just need them to clarify uh, okay. where the money, where they think the money's coming from, so that you all can have a so not to avoid some people thinking it's going to be a loan or other people thinking it's going to be a gift or a okay. grant. Um, and you all should have that discussion about what are feasible, you know, what are feasible. So uh, I just. From the people, from the people I've talked to, there's virtually zero support for a large loan. Yes. yes. Okay. So I just want to make sure that's so, reflected so, in the report. My, my fear, yes, there's zero support for any large loan. But my fear is for it to remain listed as it is, yep. gifts slash grants mm -hmm. slash loan, yep. that leaves it open For to be in one of those yeah. three. And human nature would lead me to mm -hmm. the easiest way to do it. And the easiest way to do it is to borrow the money. And I then go and only have to, there's only five uh, municipalities involved in the nature center, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so I only have to convince three of them to borrow the money. And you need all five to borrow. No, oh, yeah. do you? Yes, me neither. Okay, but even if you need only five, you only have to convince five people. Uh, or the five, uh, you, all you have to do is convince the elected officials right. to go along with it, as opposed to going out and get grants or going out and get gifts, which is much harder than to deal just with the elected officials. And honestly, I think the comment back on this ought to be, it's great, we love the boardwalk, but there needs to be some kind of a financial plan. Like you can't put in $6 million over three years and think that the five municipalities are gonna bear the burden of taking on another loan because that takes money away from what we can then directly provide to our residents here in Patton Township. So I think the comment back should be, yeah, you, they, they built the new education center at uh, Millbrook Marsh and that was all money that was donated. So put together a plan for the boardwalk and also triage the boardwalk and maybe don't do the entire thing and make all the upgrades. Just fix what the people love so much about it now and then look at a long-term strategy for funding that boardwalk later, right? And I think okay. that's what they haven't done. And Doug and Larry are right. This is our opportunity to have some kind of a say now before they start sticking these things into the budget for next year. So I, ju I just want to make sure that our comments reflect that. And again, I apologize that I didn't do my homework and make sure they're there. And, and, I, and I think our comments do reflect Okay, that. thank you. Um, but, mm -hmm. you know, speaking of the... the the, the education building, um, my recollection, it, it started out in the same way. They came to us and mm -hmm. said, oh, we, we need two and a half million dollars for this building. All we have to do is have the municipalities pony up the money. And the municipalities immediately said, no, you go out there and, and get gifts or get grants to do the money. And I think we agreed for like $100,000 we pledged for that building. Um, but we did not borrow the money, which was their first, their first round was we're just going to borrow the money. Um, it's a much easier. And as I recall, the, the, um, and one of the uh, arguments against uh, sinking money into that, sinking municipal money into it, was that we were not we confident that about the loan or about the arrangement that we had with the organization that owns it. That's yeah. correct. Yep. And so I'm assuming the same would underlie the boardwalk. Exactly. Okay. The, orga the organization that owns what? Penn State. Well, Penn State Penn owns that. Sorry, I was trying to be polite. Penn State owns that land. <laughs> yeah, the COG doesn't control that land. Penn State yeah. controls that land. And, so, and we rent it? Yeah, there's a long-term, I believe it's a long-term long lease. Term. Yes, it's a long-term I just, just want to make sure that when I represent this at the exec meeting, and we have several different people on different committees, but that I say the right thing because I can 
what I've heard so far is, no, we don't want to do this loan. Uh, and, if, and if there's interest in proceeding, let's start with the attempt to get grants and, exactly. and contributions. Mm -hmm. But if I'm wrong about that, then please let me know now. No, that's correct. I think at our last meeting we were all um, in agreement um, to follow um, Larry and, and Doug's recommendation that this was not a good plan and that it should be coming from our township that we are not in support of um, the $7 million. Um, so. I guess I, I'm speaking for myself. I'm I'm voting that we do not. Mm -hmm. Do we actually need a resolution on this, or do we? Uh, I mean, we're just giving comments. feedback at this time. Yeah, right. we're submitting feedback, and I think if you want, we can make sure that that comment is reflected in the comments we send back to the call. Okay. Just make sure. Yeah, it's there anyone who has a different opinion that, <clears throat> than that? that, that no, they were they were able to find two point five million or whatever for the the nature center, right? And I mean, I would like to, I have not gotten out there yet. I was doing my research virtually, just looking at stuff, and and so I am curious to know like what the demands are for like when we think about the boardwalk, what what are the consumers actually sort of like asking for? What actually needs to be upgraded? Yeah, I agree with like a contribution. Sure, we can provide something, right? Just so that we feel like we have some type of ownership over it. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely would not touch <laughs> six figures. I mean, well, seven figures, right? A million dollars, and definitely not with loans. And so, um, especially with interest rates where they are now. Goodness, yeah. Who knows what they're doing next, but we don't exactly. we'll, fu we'll fuss it's over that. Right. It's not the time to borrow any significant amount of money. Okay. Okay. Betsy. Betsy. Um, as your solicitor, I usually don't talk much, but now I'm going to speak as a resident of Patton Township. <laughs> All right. You spend a lot of money on Patton Township parks. And I think that's also something that each one of you should put in your feathers and your cap when you talk about these issues. You're not asking for regional money for Bennell Road Park. And as far as I'm concerned, that park gets a lot of use, as does Circleville Park. Those are both Patton Township owned and designed and created and funded parks. Um, I know other townships have their own parks some of which have similar facilities, but many of which do not have the extent of facilities that you have in those two parks, which are truly, in my mind, regional parks. And if you don't think the residents of Bender Township are using your park, as well as those throughout the center region, you just need to come, you know, you, you drive down uh, Brunel Road now and there's a peel of traffic, and some goes into Nittany Valley Sports Complex and the other group goes into Brunel Road park at about this time of the day. So put that in your hat and remind yourselves of the amount of money you're already investing for Patton Township on our stuff and not just the regional. I think that's another reason for you to be asking strong questions when you're going to be asked to fund things. Because all, all I see is we keep getting asked to fund things. And I, as a resident, I say, I'd like you to, I, if you've got $500,000 that's just sitting around, which I know isn't true, I'd rather have you put it into those two parks. I'm more likely as a resident to use those two parks than I am to go all the way over to Millbrook Marsh, just being candid with you. And I think there are a lot of residents out there who would say that, and maybe our next survey, we ought to be asking how much of these other parks are our residents really using versus our parks. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Well, and we know that there's a lot of people coming to our parks in the, a recent conversation that we had about the pee ball. I'm not going to say the whole word, but we know who's using those courts. The maintenance, um, the maintenance though, is, uh, is done regionally. So it's, I mean, it's not... But, uh, right, but, but we put out a referendum, basically, and, and our citizens chose to put money into that. And in fact, I was going to ask if um, it would be possible uh, to have a referendum to the citizens uh, in the COG region, whether they wanted to, whatever, I don't, I don't care. It's a little bit, I'm a little brain dead right now. Um, similar to what they did with, with the state high project, state, the state high project that was of course driven by a different entity. 
school district as opposed to the government. Um, I, I would like to also mention one thing that I would like to have in the comments uh, in the CIP is uh, something about, um, uh, sorry, uh, hybrid vehicles or electric vehicles. Um, Patton Township and is the one that has the highest um, goal in terms of reaching our, our uh, reducing our carbon emissions by 2050, and that we have that in resolution, and that drives what we do. Mm -hmm. The borough, I believe, has an, almost as high, um, and the Harris Township is quite low. Whatever, but but we are the ones who are going to have to be doing a little bit more to reach that. So I would like to see some of that included. Yeah, I included that. Okay. Comments cause to consider alternative fuel and hybrid vehicles. Thank you. Replacement okay. motor vehicles. And these things are these things are not uh, brain surgery. These are easy. These are easier things to do. Yeah. My, my <laughs> yes, I agree with these efforts for. Um, Electrifying our vehicles and other spaces. Uh, upfront costs, though, for those are more expensive. Are more Correct. what? Or more yes. expensive. Are. Um, yeah. Some are. Yeah, I mean, okay. yes, they are right now. I, I just don't want them coming back with recommendations to uh, electrify their vehicles when, again, and I, I guess we'll talk about this, just the vehicles that they have now and the way that they're sort of like requesting things doesn't really seem to be utilized as effectively or efficiently and so I would prefer municipality will patent we modernize our stuff first prior to giving money to COG for them to modernize their electrify their stuff if that makes sense right? no, it doesn't it doesn't make sense N not quite I didn't capture all of it so you so that I would prefer that patent whatever stuff we use in our vehicles that right. we electric we spend money up front mm -hmm. which is going to be more expensive at electrifying our stuff first mm -hmm prior to providing money to the COG for them to uh, electrify their things because again, it's gonna be pretty expensive instead of them just utilizing the vehicles and stuff that they already have. And if we're okay. electrifying our vehicles and again, potentially gifting mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. our gas vehicles, right? Um, th that just seems more efficient and cost effective than them coming back again with recommendations for hybrid or electric vehicles. Okay, I, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Um, and I guess in the strict sense, our goals are set only for Patton Township, but the vehicles that are driven, that are purchased by COG are also driven throughout COG, which includes Patton Township. So I, I mean, I'm splitting hairs here, I know. Um, and it's, it's not that we, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, setting the priority. It, it, I mean, it's partly too like there's a lot of a lot of vehicles <laughs> around, and yeah. I, I just don't want. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. To, okay. Uh, I, is this a blanket? Uh, because I, I I know some of the ones we looked at last year, the difference in price was was astronomical. It wasn't so much nominal, but it was affordable for us. We got the police cruiser for, I think it came in at 30, so 32. So what we looked at last year was we looked at a vehicle and the difference in the price wasn't that much. So we went with the, uh, the that, cruiser. That plug in hybrid. Yeah. The plug in hybrid. Yeah. It's not hybrid. It's just, yeah. But we also looked at a piece of public works equipment mm -hmm. and the difference in cost was like two and a half times. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was, it was yeah. a mower yeah. and the difference in the cost mm -hmm. was astronomical. Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. decided not to go I with remember, that yeah. electric. I remember that exactly. It was, yeah. it was just too much. Yeah. Um, so, and I, I just want to say I agree um, with what Sutan is saying. Okay. That we should spend our additional dollars on Patton Township um, first before we we spend it on increased costs at at COG, which Patton Township would only benefit about twenty percent of, as okay. opposed to benefit a hundred percent if we did it for Patton Township. So. Okay. 
So oh, much as I would like to get in the message about electrifying vehicles, if there's some way to put that in there, I always, it, it I is. always defer, yes, and thank you, and I, my bad for not reading it, to our finance, our I financial think, director. I think <laughs> that, that the, the, the thing that I, I, I would like is, is maybe a consensus of the board before I attend the meeting tomorrow that these suggested consensus comments are, are agreeable with the board and that's what we're going to go in mm -hmm. because um, I know I get up on a soapbox on this. I imagine I'll be on a soapbox. I'll be carrying a couple soapboxes in with me tomorrow. So um, I just want to make sure that as a non-elected official, as a staffer, I want to make sure that I represent you guys. It's good. Alexander, did you have a comment? My comment has nothing to do with electric vehicles. It has to do with parks maintenance, and I want to thank Betsy Dupuy for her comments first, uh, because we do put a lot of, staff does put a lot of time and energy into our parks, and we'll be doing, uh, we're going to be starting construction in Burnell for next phase. So thank you. Everyone calls it the airport park, so it's not even, yeah. I think so, what I'm hearing is that we should probably do this uh, in, in the form of a motion of, yeah. of our position. Mm -hmm. Okay, that yeah. would so even be better. That, yep. that way, that would even be better. So, so what is the motion? So I, I move that um, we accept the comments as presented, uh, accept them officially so that Larry can then carry them uh, with him, uh, uh, with his as he stands on his soapbox tomorrow morning yeah. at the I committee meeting. Accept uh, and endorse, right? Yeah, yeah accept and endorse. Just, I did as, as revised, days. maybe. Go yeah, ahead. so I, I added under regional parks. Man, I lost my place because that's big. Um, this is that the board will not support loans to fund the boardwalk project and that the agency should develop a long term. Uh, I said 10 years plus program to incrementally replace and improve the boardwalks. And then I also added a, a, that COGS should consider alternate fuel and hybrid vehicles as options for all new and replacement motor vehicle units. Great. Thanks. Are those, should we say strongly consider? Should we what? Or say strongly consider? I know. Can, can we have some language? I'm, I'm just, I don't want, if the if the goal is to, and again, philosophically, I agree with like getting that messaging out there that this is where we want to move to. Um, however, if the goal, goal is to, for them to come back with something that is more uh, palatable cost-wise, I, I think just messaging like that isn't really that helpful because I don't want them to take this and say, all right, all the things that I already have a lot of problems with the request for uh, um, vehicles, and I actually would like to see that worded even sh more strongly across the board. Um, I, I just think it's problems with with the request for vehicles. But yeah, I just don't want them. If the goal is to lower sort of like costs and what they're asking for, I think language like that they'll just come back with. And, and, and honestly, sitting through the uh, facilities and the finance committee. They already consider alternative fuel and hybrid vehicles. Okay. So cost. we don't need to amplify. So that. it's already it's okay. already a consideration. Take that out? Yeah, I I would take it out. I don't think it's necessary <laughs> because okay. they were told by the finance committee five years okay. ago mm -hmm. that they should always consider hybrid and and, and electronic. Um, Good. Vehicle, Thank you. Okay. Vehicles, so. They already do, and I think that's already reflected in so, these numbers. So we don't want to suggest that they uh, spend more money to, and save more money at the same time. It doesn't make any sense. Does yeah, uh, thanks, Larry. That's yeah. a great clarification, and, and thanks for that. All right. And thanks, Sutan, for bringing that up. Yeah. So we have a motion to endorse the comments. Mm -hmm. Second. Boardwalk comments to the right section. Realized I had one the wrong. Okay. Put those down under regional. Who made the Who made the motion? That, uh, that's that's the motion. Yes. Sutan no, second. And second. Well, Su Sutan amended it, so it's the motion oh. as amended, I guess. Yes. I'll second. Okay. Any other comments? Can someone help explain the 
what's this plan for a potential fire station in Ferguson? So it's, uh, Doug, <laughs> do you want me to try to answer this? I'll give it a try. So it's, huh? it's, it's sort of like the amendment. same as uh, the, the fire station we have here. Um, I would assume that Ferguson is building that fire station. I think that's still under discussion. So yeah. Is it? The, is it? Is it still under discussion? I, I don't know where that discussion is, but the dis discussion with the last um, Patton Township built this one in 2001, something like that. Yes. Um, and we paid 100% yes. of the cost we paid for that. Money. When College Township did a significant remodel to their building to add the fire station on the ground floor, if you ever want, you can get a tour down there. But there's actual fire station underneath the College Township building that houses, has bunk rooms, uh, live-in space, and space for apparatus. Um, and College Township funded 100% of that. And the intention was going forward was when the next station that was to be required would be out in Ferguson Township to serve that part of the Alpha's uh, service region that it would be a uh, Ferguson Township responsibility. And then the borough also does, I mean, the borough built the downtown station themselves many, many, many years ago. I don't know if there's any history on that, but, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe, maybe. but that, that was what the elected officials all agreed to 10 years ago. Yeah. Okay, now, before we finish that, let's take a vote on the, uh, the comments that were well, well, the, well, no, that was that was part of the comment. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, on, okay. No, that's he all, might okay. want to revise it. Oh, again. Sorry. Yeah. 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 We need to do that first. Yeah. yeah. So I was looking at the the fire fund, and um, I know that was one of the comments I had of like, why are we trying to build a storage facility? What's needed in that storage facility for all that money? If they're already having discussions about building another fire station, so. So we're questioning the storage facility. Why can't we use the existing? So, so the, the storage facility, I know a little bit more about from my uh, facilities of uh, tour of the Elf Fire Station downtown. So on, in their station uh, at the corner of uh, College and Beaver and Beaver and Atherton. Um, they have in there a bunch of um, gear that is stored mm -hmm. that they are out of space. They don't have enough space to store down there all the different uh, fire suits and, and um, handheld fire equipment, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it was decided that they would need a storage a separate storage facility because they've, they've run out of space in the building downtown. So now they have rented, currently they're renting a space that there's, they moved the um, administrative fire admin offices, I want to say, out of the building downtown and they moved some of the storage into what they are um, renting. Now at this point in time, they can continue to rent. Mm -hmm. um, that will be fine, because as we said, you know, right now is not a good time to to, uh, to borrow any long-term funds, such as a mortgage. Uh, maybe uh, interest rates will come back down. So my recommendation to them um, would be to continue to rent until we see what happens with interest rates in the economy. But the reason for it is they have run out of storage space at their um, building downtown. And so if Ferguson built theirs, some of that equipment? They would, they would build, in addition, some storage space onto that building. Because they don't have any storage space on our building, and they certainly probably don't have any storage space on college. Can I can I add to that? Um, being on the COGS Public Safety Committee um, as vice chair, it was brought to each of the municipalities uh, and to the general forum when um, former Chief 
Steve Baird presented it. And the presenting, just like um, Larry said, that they needed more um, space for to store the fire equipment. And we went over it um, through all the municipality representatives and we agreed with Chief Baird that that was a necessity. Um, and he brought all the documentation to show us why we needed to rent that space. In fact, they tried to rent it here in Patton. And because we did not have the space um, for that storage, they later, I think it's out by the mall, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's out, out by, by the area. mall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that they were able to get a good cost effective to rent and store the fire equipment. But it was presented at the general forum. We all voted on it, and that's why we are, you know, we are renting that storage facility. Thank you. Thank you. So we don't need to add, add anything about that to our comments that you're taking to. Yeah, I, think, I think our comments say yeah. something about that. Yeah, it's already in there. Yeah. I think it's already in there. Yeah, I like the comments as it is. I just All right, some uh -huh. clarification on. But I also. will make sure that I bring it up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And they don't have like surplus stuff that they don't actually need. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we're ready to vote on our. This question is second. Okay, mm -hmm. all, all, in favor. all in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Which now, I believe. Does anybody need a two minute break? I think poor Walt has been waiting patiently. <laughs> Walt does not need a two minute break. <laughs> I think that's what we're here. Walt, go ahead. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Hi. I'm here uh, by your request to talk about the update for the Center Region uh, Rental Housing and Building Safety Code. Uh, you went over this, I believe, at your last meeting. I've received comments from the manager. I'm here to answer any questions you may have uh, and uh, understand completely and have, uh, again, here to answer more than anything else, questions you may have prior to us drafting a draft ordinance for your consideration uh, at some time in the future, probably in June. No apology necessary. <laughs> I get tired sometimes. Um, your comments that it, your comments that I've received um, really re reside around maintaining what you've already done in the past and maintaining that. And then the second is that the additional appendices for the fire code should not be adopted, and that's fine and that chapter 11 also should not be adopted and that that would be administered by uh, patent PD in its current ordinance format and that's fine as well. Yeah, and that just maintains the status quo mm -hmm. for where we are in Patton Township. So, yep. Um, does that agree with, with mm -hmm. everyone? And that to mm -hmm. my side, we don't really need any action tonight. I'm just asking again if we're in that um, mindset, then I can start working on preparation for a draft ordinance uh, to get to the manager for future consideration. Great. Thank you. Yeah, I like good. things as is. I don't, I don't it's okay. think moving yeah. forward with the draft. Mm -hmm. Sorry for making you sit through this whole meeting. That's why, that's why I'm here. I'm, your, I'm here for you, and you know, I'm your building code official, so I'm here to answer any questions and uh, be able to make sure that what we have in place is what you want. Appreciate your we efforts. Appreciate. Thank you. I appreciate it and have a wonderful evening. Thanks for sticking Thank it you. out. Thank you. Thank you. I guess we are now up to the consent agenda. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Is there anything that needs to be pulled out of the consent agenda? Is there a motion to accept? I move that we accept the consent agenda. I move. A second. It's been seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that passes unanimously. And now to the truly exciting portion of the meeting, the manager's report. We well, have two managers sitting here. I'm going to get into this. Go ahead. Okay, so um, I would just say that I have been here three days now, and I'm very thankful to your wonderful staff who have been guiding me and helping me know where I'm going and what I'm doing, and I don't still really know any of that, so that's helpful. Um, I will be reaching out to each of you to set up meetings. I'd like to meet with you all individually to talk about your goals uh, for the township and some process things. I'm meeting with the solicitor tomorrow morning to talk with her a little bit. And I want to thank Doug. He's been a big help with this transition. Uh, we started working back in March when after I was appointed, and he's been a huge help to me. So I'm sorry to see him go. I have big shoes to fill, but I'm excited <laughs> to be here. He's right up the road. You can just call him. <laughs> I promised Kim today I wouldn't call him, so... No, it's okay. We're, we're, it's all part of the, you know, the secret handshake one. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. So, Doug, did you have anything else you wanted to highlight from your report? Um, just notice the development update from the zoning officer was included. If you have any questions, we can respond to those. Another uh, update from DEP about the PFA groundwater issue in Benner Township. Uh, We've got a report from uh, Center County Recycling and Refuse about their uh, successful hazardous ha household hazardous waste collection. Uh, new item was CATA has announced that they will hold a hearing on their proposed fall 2023 service changes. I don't think there's anything really significant to Patton Township other than the fact that they're going to expand the CATA GO service area. So I think. What that means is you'll be able to uh, reach more um, destinations on Catago without having to switch to any of the fixed route service. So, uh, you know, if you have questions, I would say contact Cata and uh, get more. Or the uh, when is the hearing scheduled? May twenty third is the hearing date. Also at four thirty. At the so, library. Right. Well, I, uh, yes. Uh, yep. I plan Downtown to be in there. The community room at Splow Center Regional Library. And they're proposing a, mm -hmm. a a relatively small fair hike. I believe so. Yes. Yeah. And I do believe they're going to be talking about rescheduling, rerouting our W. Yeah. So I will be there. <laughs> okay. So if you have interest in CATA routing or CATA go, attend, attend the hearing and make sure they know your, your comments. Upcoming uh, Township events, uh, office be closed May 29, 2019, July 4th, election next week, vote if you're a registered Democrat <coughs> or Republican, vote waste is May 22, 26, and remember on May 30th, Curbside collection will start at 6 a.m. instead of 7, so get your stuff up. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, so now, now we're up to, uh, does anyone have anything to add to any of the committee reports that are here? We didn't, we didn't meet. Do that. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. I have, um, since we had our May um, 9th, Public Safety Committee meeting, um, I will be returning that in at our next meeting. But what uh, we did do is the annual um, public safety report from Sean Kaufman. Um, also, LifeLink was there, um, and the EMS um, from Port Matilda and Penn State did their reports. Um, it was quite interesting. It was quite informative. So I'm um, waiting to get some information from them to present at our next um, board meeting. Anything else? I mean, yeah, the HR committee met and um, I think some similar concerns were you know, brought up with uh, some of the recommended uh, new positions um, and not really wanting them to consider 
um, total costs were actually, you know, creating a new position with a full-time staff um, as opposed to, you know, increases in um, rates for contracting services out. And I think this was really for uh, potential for uh, Millbrook Marsh um, uh, facility sort of types of work um, they were trying to create new positions for and so again really recommending that they uh, you know consider the full costs of, of full-time positions um, as well as there was something else that was important um, so this would mean be very cautious about just adding stuff yes not just adding things and then not having a backup plan for um, uh, so if we have an employee who's uh, committed to different uh, sort of like facilities, for example, and now you're creating a new position for one larger facility, and it's like, okay, how is this other position then going to fill that that gap in that time? And um, there was like really no understanding of what those work responsibilities would be included in that. And so, um, again, really having them think more critically about like the necessity of creating new positions. Uh, yeah, so... Anyone else have any reports? Exec is coming up. Not yet. Okay. All right. Well, that brings us to is there any other business? No. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. It's been moved. Is there a second? We are adjourned. Second.